And now broadcasting from the EFX Sports Studio, it's ESPN EFX Sports Radio with Dr. Jeff Galini. Well, welcome to EFX Sports Radio. My name is Dr. Jeff Galini with my co-host, Mr. Brian Andrews. Yes, I'm ready to lay down the digital 411. Oh, yeah, it's a beautiful day here in uh, sunny Billings, Montana. How about your neck of the woods? You know, it's actually sunny here, too. It's a little crisp. You, know, you can definitely tell fall's rolling in, but it's a beautiful day. And speaking of a beautiful day, that's the best time to get up early and uh, hit the gym for a little bit of weight training. Weight training, that's an awesome topic. Man, you know what? I was thinking that that's a big uh, category. You know, weight training means so many things to to different people i thought man if we're going to talk about weight training we probably should first define you know what is weight training yes absolutely and and especially you know with with the audience we have you know who are athletes or who want to be athletes or a better athlete weight training it's funny you know it was one of those things you know back in what the 50s or so was kind of like taboo you didn't do it because you would get too big or your muscle range your range of motion would really be decreased but when we're talking about weight training we're talking about specifically training your body really for for one or one or both reasons to get stronger or to change your appearance yeah i used to always hear you're going to get muscle bound and you won't be able to tie your shoes (laughs) <laughs> muscle bound and then when you quit lifting all that muscle is going to turn to fat Turned to fat <laughs> oh uh, for the record it is impossible for muscle to convert to fat <laughs> yeah there are two completely different types of tissue yeah but that's how people used to think and i think people still think that way a little bit you know but yeah there's you know there's a lot of different type of weight training you know when you mention weight training to me you know the first thing that comes to my mind is you know a regimen you know going into the gym and uh, utilizing weight training to either you know build one's body or to prepare one for sport but boy this day and age there's so many different categories that have uh, popped up i I mean how many have you seen out there oh oh, there's a i can throw a rock in 10 different directions and hit 10 different gyms and it's interesting how it used to just be kind of the mainstream you know bodybuilding you know what people would perceive that to be then it was more hey i want to get in shape but now because of all the different types of sports i mean people have taken say i mean think about how many ways can you lift a weight how many bench presses can you do so there's been a lot of um i guess reinventing so to speak i mean in, in good ways but uh, isn't it interesting to see how diverse it's come? It's kind of like, you know, it's in the supplement industry, how many types of protein are there? At the end of the day, it's, it's protein. Yeah, you know, I remember back when I was in high school, we used to have what we called circuit training, you know, where the coach would, would set up all these stations, and if there weren't enough uh, weights or, or military presses open, then in that station you'd jump rope and, or push-ups or do something, jumping jacks. And, you know, you have a stopwatch and be 60 seconds, okay, lift. And then you do that lift for 60 seconds and then change. And then, you know, you change. And uh, they used to call that circuit training. And I think that is one of kind of the new phenomena with all this CrossFit. And, I mean, there's a hundred different names, kettleball, you know. Um, but uh, it's kind of interesting because I've seen a lot of people out here get hurt um, getting into that, that type of training. Well, and, and I know, again, I'm not an expert on that particular thing, but from what I do know, the idea is that you, you, a lot of it is trained in groups and similar to your circuit, circuit training you talked about, you're all doing kind of the same movements, trying to push to that next level, which, hey, I'm glad for anyone to do, honestly, any type of exercise. The, the problem I see is that you're mixing groups of people that are very experienced with people who are, say, newbies, and the type of lifting is ballistic, meaning it's not like a controlled, very strict form. And it's so easy to get injured, especially when you're new and your body is just not used to that type of, um, you know, movement. Oh, absolutely. You know, the adrenaline gets adrenaline gets flowing and you want to keep up with, uh, you know, the next guy or gal. But, you know, my recommendation for weight training is, you know, you got to be safe and you got to know what you're doing. You know, do not just jump into anything. You know, don't hire a personal trainer that hasn't properly instructed you. You know, don't jump in one. I call them CrossFit. You know, there's a cabillion names for, you know, everybody's different class. But again, it's, you know, that circuit training. You know, just don't jump into a class. I mean, you need to learn how to stretch um, and to fuel your body before doing these type of exercises. Um, And then make sure you go at your pace. You know, don't try to jump into a brand new weight training program and try to keep up with someone who's been doing it for, you know, three, four years. 
Oh, absolutely. It, it all comes over time. You know, it's funny. Hindsight's twenty twenty. You know, if I again the old thing, if I could go back in time twenty years, type of thing. Just knowing again what I know now. If, if I could tell myself back then, think long term. In other words, don't think about the now. And I got to be there right now. And I got to be huge and strong. Wow. I mean, just little aches and pains that I have, say, now being in my mid 40s that I know come from not training properly in certain movements or, you know, the little things that you felt back then. You just pushed through it. You didn't care because your body was young and it would bounce back so quickly. Now it's kind of like, hmm, I should rethink this a little bit and think <laughs> if I could think longevity. Absolutely. You know, and I think you got to be smart about weight training. And that's what we're talking about is you got to realize that, you know, bodybuilders are probably the smartest weight trainers of all. That's why bodybuilders can build their physiques to such outrageous proportions. You know, other athletes um, haven't quite figured out sometimes that you got to rest. You know, you can't do a CrossFit class every single day. You are bombarding your body. You are going to tear something. Uh, I mean, it's not natural. You know, I always recommend that if you're going to, you know, put together your weightlifting regimen, you know, kind of a rule of thumb is do upper body and lower body two days a week. You know, not legs every day or bench presses every day. You know, you got to kind of break that out so that there's at least a one to two day rest in between those body parts. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm absolutely with you on that. I'm a huge proponent of recovery, which to me, that is the secret to all of this. You know, people talk about taking anabolic steroids and all this stuff. Yeah, they help you grow, but what they're really doing is helping you recover at an accelerated rate. So in other words, if there was no problem or, you know, there was an overtraining and all this kind of stuff, you could train 10, 12 hours a day and you, you would be the biggest person on the planet, but you've got to recover. In other words, you're digging a hole. Now you got to fill that hole back in to build a mountain on top of it. Oh, yeah. I remember when we were in high school, we'd go into the gym uh, weight room after school, like at three o'clock, and we'd lift sometimes till seven, eight o'clock at night. I got no idea what we were doing for <laughs> six hours, man. You're like, I mean, you blow your shoulders out. I don't know, you know, and I see a lot of guys that just spend, you know, hours and hours. And it's like, man, the, the first thing I learned is that, you know, you got to do less. You know, if you're training in tents <clears throat> and you have your workout planned, you know, you should be able to get in and get get out. I mean, that's one of the things that the CrossFit type um, uh, classes teach is, you know, it's a short period of time. You know, someone is telling you what to do. The bad thing, like I said, is they're doing it too often and um, there's not enough, you know, stretching and preparation. It's just, okay, jump in. And I see, you know, people from kids to, you know, grandmas and grandpas in the same class. So be careful on that one. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I'm kind of with you. I mean, in my in my experience, you know, um, I've always I've come to the point of believing that less is more, and that's with most things in life. Right. I mean, you don't. Why do you need to train three hours a day? You're you're not going to get there, especially if you don't have that. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, assistance. Yeah. So you're not going to recover from that. I mean, that's that's a big problem, and we've all done it. You flip open one of the latest you know muscle magazines, you see this guy just looks like a Greek god or a Superman, and I go, wow, how does he train? I want to copy what he's doing. Yeah. That is an accelerated workout. You cannot do that. No, you couldn't even keep up with me, half, uh, half of the kids at my gym. <laughs> and it's only because <laughs> they go. don't know what they're doing. But, yeah, exactly. if, but, you know, is weightlifting safe? If you know what you're doing, it's like anything. If you are, are properly skilled, you know how to properly perform those exercises, weight training is safe. Where it becomes dangerous is where it's uncontrolled. You know, you're swinging, you're trying to handle way too much weight. Um, and then too many people that I see throughout the country have abandoned, you know, things like weightlifting belts and knee wraps. Ridiculous. Some <laughs> conceived notion that you won't build your lower erectors in your back. Well, go look at one of my pictures from when I bodybuilded. That was probably one of my biggest parts, and I would not even do calves or forearms without a weightlifting belt. Wow. That, that, like you said, that's taboo today, man. The people would be looking at you and laughing, but then again, they'd see you're three times their size. So you got to think, wait a minute, maybe there's something to this. Well, it's all about preventive. You know, I mean, if you want to prolong your lifting days, you know, you got you to gotta prevent injuries. I mean, you know, tools like weightlifting belts and knee wraps and wrist wraps, I mean, are all about uh, keeping you safe. And that whole thing, no pain, no gain, um, again, you got to be careful. Pain means something isn't going right. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's like, really there's a good pain and a bad pain, which is, you know, actually it's time to go to break. So let's, let's pick up on that, you know, pain coupled with ego and pride.
Hey everybody, I'm Billy Gordon. I'm one of the coaches for the Heights Wrestling Club. I just wanted to take a minute and talk to you about EFX Sports and what their products have done for me and my wrestlers and the athletes that I lead. Six months ago, I got introduced to EFX Sports and I immediately started using them myself. The results have been nothing short of amazing. My body fat and weight have come down drastically. My strength has increased. If you get the opportunity, I highly recommend you give it a shot. This is Dr. Jeff Galini of All American Pharmaceutical. I'm sure you've been seeing our national brand, EFX Sports, featuring Carbolin and Crealcolin all around the state lately. Our supplements are formulated for pros to high schoolers to just the average gym goer and are all about improving your game. You can find EFX Sports and Billings at Yellowstone Fitness, Lucky's, Bonanza's Health Food, Granite Fitness, and GNC, just to mention a few. Do you know how to properly use carbohydrates to ignite your performance in the field and in the gym? You will now, thanks to this free book by EFX Sports. The Carb User's Guide for Maximum Performance reveals why omitting carbohydrates from your diet can totally crush your gains. Ever wonder how many grams you need for your specific sport? Not anymore. We give you the critical number you need to dominate your competition. You'll even discover the super carb that's taking the athletic world by storm. You must try it to believe it. Go to getcarbolin.com forward slash carb guide today and get your copy absolutely free once again it's g-e-t-k-a-r-b-o-l-y-n dot com forward slash c-a-r-b-g-u-i-d-e Welcome back to EFX Sports Radio. We are talking about uh, weight training today. Absolutely. What an awesome subject. One of my favorite things. Yeah, it's kind of like eating breakfast. I mean, I couldn't imagine, you know, not going to the gym. I mean, relieve stress, you feel good. And obviously, as an athlete, you know, that's where you prepare your body for battle. Absolutely. You know, and right before we went to break, we were talking about injuries again, that type of thing. The reason why we harp on it so much is because we've all been there. I mean, I've had shoulder issues that I've had to train train with on and off for years. This, you know, back problems, things that have happened that, you know, you got to decide, am I done or am I going to push through it? And I just, you know, that old saying, pride cometh before the fall. Look, yeah. if, if you, it's all based on your beating, beating yourself. In other words, beating your own personal rep, uh, I'm trying to say your personal best. Don't worry about what another guy can do. I mean, I've seen a guy bench 600 pounds. I'll never do that in my lifetime, even with all the drugs on the planet. But if I could say bench three and then get to 315 or 350, that's fantastic for me. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, talking about pain, there's a difference between, you know, doing a, a squatting and, you know, you get to your 10th or 11th, 11th rep and you feel that lactic acid burn. That's something that you want to push through because that – is what happens in the fourth quarter. That's what happens in the last mile of the race. You know, you got to push through that. We're talking about, you know, a, <clears throat> a shoulder pain, you know, some pull. You know, that's what you have to be careful. Your body's saying, hey, first of all, something isn't going right, or maybe you get hurt. And if you continue on, you're going to be worse, and then you're going to end up having to take a whole lot of time off. Yeah, exactly. Again, when we talk about no pain, no gain, we're strictly talking about your muscles burning, your body, and you're, you're trying to say, no, I'm done, and your mind saying, uh-uh, we're going to do another rep or whatever, pushing through that, not, hey, you've got a pretty bad injury or you know you're teetering on really getting hurt and you do it anyway. That That's just foolish. You know, another question I hear a lot, uh, especially from uh, females, is weight training safe for women? And, <laughs> and I think... <laughs> well, and, and coupled onto that, it's, so I don't want to do that. I want to look like those girls in those magazines. I, I don't want to get too big. Oh, man, if I had a quarter for every time I heard that, you know. Absolutely. And my and my answer to that is, I tell you what, I challenge you right now to get too big. Yeah. If you I always, do that, I will personally write you a check for $10,000. <laughs> I want to see you get too big. I always say it's impossible. You're never going to get that big, even if you try. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you have to educate, you know, that depending on the type of training... You know, this is where, again, education, knowing what you're trying to accomplish, you've got to do some research and figure out what is your sport. If you just want to look good and be healthy, well, then you train a certain way. You know, if you're going to play football, basketball, volleyball, you run track, basketball, I mean, different types of weight programs are for those type of sports. You know, obviously, bodybuilders, their body is their playing field, so they have to get big. 
you know, certain football players need to hold more muscle because, again, you know, that's part of the the sport. But you don't want to be a long distance runner and weigh in 350 pounds. <laughs> I mean, that's where, you know, the diet and what you eat and all that comes into play. It's not necessarily the, the weight training that is going to just put on pounds and pounds of muscle. Well, sure. And, you know, talking about women, I mean, uh, you know, a lot of girls say, I, I, I want to have this like shapely, sexy physique, you know, that type of thing. But it's like, I can tell you right now, it's not going to come from jogging or, or, or running on a treadmill. I mean, it really is going to come from changing the shape and proportion of your muscle. So and that's why you want to weight train. There's nothing that can touch that. that you can come close. Yeah. Let me bust a myth here too. Um, bust away. Here's a busted myth. When you folks see some guy or go- girl either on bodybuilding.com or in a magazine or something um, and they've got that six pack look and they're just all cut up they do not look like that all the time no. you know do not be deceived by hollywood and the model you know that is not how they look they look like that the day of the picture the day of the contest one day a year so you got to be realistic with your goals also um, it's great to want to achieve, uh, you know, that six pack look, but keep in mind, you know, you can't, it's unhealthy to be that lean all the time. You can have a six pack, but it isn't going to be, you know, veined out and ripped and all that kind of stuff. No, no, no. That is literally a snapshot in time. They, they hold that. And then the next, I mean, within a week, they probably gained 10 pounds and smoothed out to a degree. Some people obviously are genetically uh, leaner than others, but that is all for a very temporary period of time. I've literally seen pro IFBB pro bodybuilders in in what they call the off season with I mean guts that hang over their belt, <laughs> which that isn't very healthy either. So what about kids? Uh, no, what, what do you no, think no, no. about uh, kids lifting weights? Kids, you know, I think it's kind of a, a, a case by case scenario. I think in general, when you're really young, it's best to do body weight type of stuff. I mean, just to be in shape, pull ups, push ups, you know, free, just free, you know, stand there and squat down and up, you know, burpees, that type of stuff, just to be active and get your, your musculature. But even some very lightweight training, I don't think is going to hurt. But maybe once you, you know, you hit your early teens, you know, your joint, your growth plates are starting to really get formed. That's when you can start actually putting on, uh, to me, I think, using actual weights. Yeah. And I think, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with uh, young kids uh, lifting or, uh, you know, doing those core type exercises, push ups. Again, it's all about make sure that, you know, your kids um, are educated. You know, find someone at the gym or someone you know, uh, contact us, uh, you know. To, to find out what should they do, you know. Um, and, again, it's all about learning how to properly uh, lift weights because it is important, you know, for uh, most any type of sport. Well, and, again, it, it all depends on the sport you're in. I mean, a guy who's training for football versus track and field, tennis, golf, I mean, every one of these sports can benefit in some way from strength training. The key is – getting with people that really know what they're doing. Don't waste your time. I mean, yeah, you can search the internet. The, the in, it's, information is endless, but it's a lot of contradictory stuff. Go to an expert, hire a trainer. I mean, why not? It's worth worth the money you're going to pay to be pushed in the right direction than to waste and time and spin your wheels. Absolutely. As an athlete, I mean, everything you do is an investment. You know, whether your, your goal is only to play high school sports and you never want to go to college, maybe you want to be a professional. You know, it's all about investing into – you know, your sport, your goal. And, you, you know, it, it does require work and commitment. And weight training, you know, is a necessity now. Just look at uh, the, the NBA basketball players from 30 years ago. I mean, they were all bean poles. Look at them now. I mean, LeBron James. I mean, they all realize that weight training is important for every sport. Look at every uh, Olympic athlete almost, you know, who runs a uh, runs or jumps or something i mean they're all built because you know weight training is important oh yeah bob sledders i mean those guys are some of the strongest <laughs> squatters you'll ever see for their i mean you know their weight to size ratio it's unbelievable how strong they are now here we go man if i oh. only had one exercise and one exercise alone that i could do guess what it would be i'm gonna have to say it's probably squats yes <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, someone asked me that one time, if you could only do one exercise, what would you do? And I, I didn't even hesitate. I said squat. You know, it's one of those things that, you know, it's probably more important to build your legs, your core uh, than anything else. You know, doing curls, you know, as we used to say, curls for the girls. Um, 
I remember when we were playing football, our coach wouldn't let us do curls because he said it was, you know, a pretty exercise. But again, the basics, you know, are the things, especially for, you know, strength sports, but also for basketball. A uh, coach the other day said, yeah, I don't have my uh, basketball player squat because I don't want him to be muscle bound in the legs. And I said, well, do you want him to jump higher? He goes, yeah. I said, well, then you need to be squatting. Uh, I mean, you know, you got a bar on your back. You're holding the bar. It's requiring your back, your chest, your arms. I mean, everything. So that's my number one favorite exercise of all time. Yeah, you know what? I think one of mine, too, is deadlifts, which is kind of like a, a hybrid squat, if you think about it. You yep. just have the weight below you. But, boy, the, between squatting and deadlifting, I mean, you're going to cover 98% of your muscle mass being active. And the other thing, too, remember that, you know, you want to put resistance on the muscle. And doing one rep does absolutely nothing. I mean, if you were a power it lifter. Your ego. Yeah, if you're a power lifter, you know, and that's your competition or when – um, you know, when we played football, you know, that was how we measured, you know, or became, you know, part of the 300 club. You know, it's fun to do that. But remember that, you know, repetitions, um, I always say 10 is kind of the, the key goal to to really uh, strengthen that muscle for yeah, to work, to work that work. tissue. Yeah, absolutely. So I guess it, it, to bring this all together, weight training is incredibly important. I put it even above cardio. Yes, that's important for your heart, but this, I don't think of any. I can't think of any other thing other than resistance exercise that's going to give people more benefit. Absolutely. So if you want to go further in your sport, get on a weightlifting program. Absolutely. So and find somebody who knows uh, what they're doing. And, and again, that's what we do. So you can always go to allamericanpharmaceutical.com, look for Brian's email or look for mine. And, hey, if you want to know what type of training to do, send us an email. We love helping out. We don't charge anything for it. That's just kind of what we do, you know, giving back. Absolutely. So anyhow, we, uh, we thank you, and we'll uh, catch you next time. Thanks for listening to ESPN EFX Sports Radio. Be sure to check out EFX Sports online at aaefx.com. And don't forget to check out EFX Sports Supplements everywhere fitness products are sold.